So let's like let's kind of go forward thinking a little bit and try and um, talk about ways that we could possibly replace the original function of the Bitcoin Foundation, which was to support Bitcoin, to promote its acceptance, and to fund the infrastructure improvements. Um, so a week ago, uh, Olivier Janssens, who is a wealthy uh, digital currency entrepreneur, he put up a $100,000 bounty a couple months ago, and a week ago he announced who would win the bounty for a possible replacement for the Bitcoin Foundation, an open source replacement, decentralized replacement. And the winner was none other than Mike Hearn and his decentralized crowdfunding platform, Lighthouse. So um, uh, Mike Hearn himself is going to get $40,000. Um, once he releases the project open source uh, sometime this summer. And another $50,000 will be donated by Janssen's to the, um, to the first crowdfunding project that actually gets off the ground on Lighthouse and uh, promotes decentralized uh, infrastructure and decentralized funding for it. And, um, you know, it shows potential. It shows potential that uh, we might not necessarily need the Bitcoin Foundation and their institutional access to actually improve Bitcoin itself. And we can move forward without them, perhaps. Yeah, I think that, I think Lighthouse, you know, if it ends up being successful, it will definitely push funding to the areas in the Bitcoin community that need it the most. And right yeah. now, that's, de right now, that's development. Um, and so that's that's most likely where all the funding would go. Uh, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that Lighthouse is just a platform for getting funding for core development mm -hmm. you know after bitcoin is perfected it could still be used as a medium of fundraising for political action if that's yeah. what people want yeah. you know or anything else is bitcoin re related you know it's basically just kickstarter except you don't have like this centralized you know Co this, company, this centralized basically. control the centralized company that controls it that takes like what 30 percent of all the donations so <laughs> and basically chooses who and who can and cannot uh put up a project for funding and what payment methods can be accepted uh, you know and, and paypal freezing funds and all this all this uh problems that come along with a centralized funding institution yeah it'll all be done through the blockchain and uh you know so the developers who have the best ideas to improve Bitcoin the best way, they'll get the most money. And, you know, they'll get all of the money minus, you know, a, a minimal transaction fee or something yeah. when it goes on the blockchain. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and people will actually be able to devote their full time to improving Bitcoin. You know, it's, I've said this before. And they'll be accountable time. too, more, more so yeah. than people who work for the foundation. Yeah, because it'll be completely transparent, right? They they can't hide. They can't. There's no way of hiding from these people who fund them. And you know, I said this before in a previous podcast, but uh, Bitcoin has it's you know it's not like a weekend warrior thing anymore. You know, you can't do this as a hobby. Right. If you're if you're gonna if if you know if you're gonna commit yourself to solving a problem with the with the protocol, it's basically a full time job at this point. You know, Mike Hearn. Uh, he quit his full time job to work on Bitcoin. Yeah, he quit at Google. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, we need more people like that. You know, we need people to devote their all of their time, all of, you know, all of their working hours to making Bitcoin better. If we want to see it reach its full potential, which yeah. is you know replacing the existing monetary structure. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I think that some people in the community have this fallacious. Um, uh, like argument in their in their heads or this fallacious belief that Bitcoin has like already pretty much um, reached its potential in terms of like features and like what it can do and stuff like that and and it's it's already like the digital currency that we can all use in the future but no like the mining centralization is just one issue that has been brought up in the recent months and Mike Hearn knows of a ton of different other different issues. You can go read his posts on the Bitcoin Foundation uh, forums, as well as on Bitcoin Talk and his own blog. There are tons of 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 uh, projects to do on the core Bitcoin code. 
that isn't getting done because we don't have a way to pay these people to do it. And anyone who thought the Bitcoin Foundation was going to play an important role in paying people to improve the code, uh, you're wrong. It's not going to happen. So we need to find a better decentralized way of doing this. Yeah, Satoshi was definitely a genius, but you know he didn't create a perfect system. Uh, like I remember, oh, yeah. I remember reading something uh, back when that the whole Newsweek thing happened, where they thought they found him, but that yeah. you know reporters really just making things up. Uh, somebody, somebody who uh, I don't, I can't remember his name, but he was like one of the original people who like worked with Nakamoto directly. Uh, after after uh, the protocols launch, mm-hmm. and he was like, and he was just talking about how um, how like obviously Satoshi Nakamoto was really old because he used such an outdated coding style that um, like his coding was just so sloppy that he had that him and uh, his partners had to spend a bunch of time just cleaning up the code and you know making it like readable basically. Mm. Um, so yeah. So, you know, Satoshi definitely didn't create a perfect system, and it's going to take a lot of work. Yeah. And, um, you know, a big part of getting that work done is, you know, paying people what, what their work is worth. Yeah. And that's yeah. Not, it's not happening at all at the Bitcoin Foundation. Yeah. Bitcoin, and, when, it was uh, first, when it first came out, it was revolutionary, and it, and it blew everyone's minds, and it's still blowing people's minds about how we can have a decentralized payment system with no central authority, with low fees, uh, that that basically has a public ledger that's verified by the most powerful computer network the world has ever known. All of that is amazing. But yeah, you're right. It's by no means perfect. It's not even close to perfect. There's tons of improvements that can be made to make it more secure, more useful for people. And yeah, we just need to yeah, pay and, people and what on they're top, worth. And on top of all that, you know... Um... Uh, you know, one thing about Bitcoin that is, you know, pretty much ignored by, you know, the bulk of the community, uh, it's, you know, like, people in the economics communities and intellectual circles, you know, they're still arguing over whether or not Bitcoin is real. <laughs> you know, like, we have... We they're have still these, at that stage of yeah, development. <laughs> yeah, we, we have all these technical problems that are huge, but, you know, then at the same time, the majority of people, and these are, like, you know this like these smartest or they're supposed to be these smartest people they're supposed to have like the they've got know, their degrees huge, and everything a huge understanding about economics and the way markets work you know but they don't even understand the basics of monetary theory and um so yeah the, it's far from perfect um i mean i personally think it's pretty amazing already but i also recognize that it's nowhere near being completed uh it's nowhere near being at a stage where it can reach its full potential, and um, so I don't, I don't like it when I see people who talk about it like it's already perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's just you know it's not, and if you know if somebody's popular enough, uh, and they have enough of a following, and they say it's perfect, then they're going to influence everybody, mm. and you know people aren't going to be as worried about solving the problems anymore. Mm. Yeah, and I guess, I don't know, like, that's kind of, like, what the attitude of the Bitcoin Foundation board members must have is, like, it's great already, it's it's maybe not perfect, but it's fantastic, and we just need to promote it to people, but no, but no, yeah, you're right, you're completely right, we need to, we need to um, find, uh, we need to fund these people better and give them actual salaries for their work. And improve, there's still work that needs to be done, basically. We're not done yet. This is only 2014. Bitcoin has only been out for around five years, a little over five years. And uh, we're, we're still at the early stages of this new financial revolution. There's still plenty of work that needs to be done. And at the end of the day, this is a, this is a computer science issue. We need computer scientists to work on this to improve it. That's who Satoshi Nakamoto was. That's who all of the important um, people working on this project and actually doing improvements are. Um, I think I think that the computer scientists working on this project should get paid by far the most, more than any, you know, executive directors at some lobbying group should be. You know. Yeah, I want to see developers. You know, if they do a good job, you know, I want to see them get rich off of this. Yeah, because yeah. you know they would be they would be doing a huge service to you know to people like me who have you know 
they, I, like I don't have the slightest clue about how to solve you know the the mining centralization problem yeah, yeah. by you know modifying the, the core protocol like so you know these people we kind of put our trust in them in a way right yeah kind of trust it's, them to do it it's it's a really specialized skill set uh, and only a handful of people can do it you know so they they definitely should be rewarded for their efforts you know and they you know they need an they need to know that they can be rewarded so they have an incentive to actually work on it, which is the problem right now. Nobody wants to do anything because it's such a huge task and nobody wants to pay them anything for it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Lighthouse, hopefully that makes a dent in this problem. And um, I like for for any uh, Bitcoin business, people from Bitcoin businesses who might be watching this right now, I just I just want to plead with you just a little bit like like just, just just stop paying membership dues to the Bitcoin Foundation. You know, it's they aren't they aren't doing anything productive with that money. Save that money and 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 invest it in actual projects on Lighthouse in the future that you can um directly fund the projects that you specifically want to see get finished. Projects that the rest of the community agrees would help to improve Bitcoin. And in in that way, you can have a very targeted effort to fund specific improvements, and also have a way to hold the um, the the project uh, doers accountable for what they're working on. Um, if if someone raises funding for a project and then doesn't execute it, like no one's going to fund them anymore. Um, so, but but like all these dynamics we don't see any of this happening at all in the bitcoin foundation we don't we can't, we don't know who's working on what unless we hear uh, hearsay from people like mike hearn or, or gavin andreessen about what they're working on and we also don't know much, how much they're getting paid for their work it seems like the foundation just pays them like a a, a yearly salary and we don't we don't know like if that includes funding for all the projects they're working on or if the foundation wants them to work on certain things or if they're even telling them what to work on at all you, you know it's 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 just completely um it's completely opaque and uh that that goes back to why Andreas Antonopoulos um resigned they're just they're just uh there's no accountability basically in the bitcoin foundation yeah, I think the best way for these companies to promote Bitcoin is, you know, to not give their money to the Bitcoin Foundation, but to directly fund people to work on development and to offer salary options for their employees in Bitcoin. That would be, you know, the best thing that companies like Overstock could do to promote the development and acceptance of Bitcoin. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Overstock, BitPay, Coinbase, BitGo. I mean, there's a whole list of them. If you go to the Bitcoin Foundation website, you can you can see the gigantic list of industry industry groups and companies that are literally paying members of of the foundation. And I just wanna I just wanna plead with them to like, you know, you know, re rethink your strategy of trying to improve Bitcoin. You know, it's great that they're making money off it, but if they want to keep making money off it and if they want to stay in business with Bitcoin as a successful digital currency, we're going to have to find better ways of actually improving the core code.